Hi friends, David here from Learn a Stage of Lighting. And in all the years we've been doing this, because now I'm ancient and, you know, we, we have been doing this for a while. Uh, one of the topics we talk about the most is lighting consoles. Why? Because I firmly believe, and it's been proven time and time again by watching students, talking to people, all this good stuff, that when you're working with lighting and you have the right lighting control situation, whether that be a software, a console, something in between, some light switches, when you have the right thing that fits the needs and the skill level that you need uh, to work with, then your life in lighting is gonna be so much more enjoyable and so much better than if you're struggling to make some console work in a way that it's not meant to do or uh, use a console that's way too simple or way too advanced for what you need it to accomplish in your skill level ultimately. I truly believe anybody could learn any lighting console or software they want and we've taught all kinds of people all sorts of things but you don't wanna be mismatched with your lighting console. And you look out there, there are so many options, right? There's, you know, PCs with little USB boxes. There's little standalone consoles. Standalone consoles with faders. You know, big old PC wings for professional consoles. Professional consoles with screens that flip down. Professional consoles in big cases. Professional consoles in little cases. Tablet apps. There's so much out there. So how do you choose? For your organization, for the people that you work with, how do you choose a lighting console that's going to fit your needs? Today, I want to talk about uh, a couple ways that I really like to look at this. Okay, so the first thing you want to look at when you're choosing a lighting console, I firmly believe this, is you want to say, okay, do I need something really basic level? Am I just trying to control a handful of lights and am I only trying to make them do relatively simple things? I don't need to change the moon. I, I you know, I, I don't need to do really complicated things. I don't need to do anything super duper specific. I just want to turn lights on, make them do some stuff, not overly complicated. That's a basic level lighting console. Some of these consoles in software, sure, they could do more than that. But ultimately, um, the basic level consoles are going to be the easiest to learn but they're also going to be the place where you hit a ceiling as to uh, what its capabilities are the soonest. But if your capabilities, if your needs are not that much, then a basic lighting console can serve you and serve you well forever. So then it's the right fit, right? Um, next, we have intermediate level lighting consoles. Okay. Now these are kind of the middle ground, kind of like, okay, it's not a basic lighting console. So it's going to have a little bit more of a learning curve, but also it's going to be able to do significantly more complex things. You're going to have more uh, specificity in the sense that if you want to make a light do a more specific thing, you're going to have more tools to do that. Can it do anything and everything you want? No. But the, the opposite side of that is that they're quicker to learn than professional level consoles and generally have less options and settings and different things that you can kind of mess up along the way. Uh, that's the biggest thing, is we really love the intermediate level consoles, um, not because they're cheaper, like often they're not cheaper than a pro grade system on a, with a PC wing or something. Oftentimes the intermediate level console might come in as more costly, but for an intermediate user, for somebody who says, okay, we're not a professional lighting person, we see this basic level stuff, it's too basic for what we need. Uh, we wanna step up, but we don't wanna put in the time and commitment to learn a professional grade console, and we wanna be able to get new volunteers, new staff members, whoever, up to speed on it really quick. In that case, an intermediate level lighting console can be a killer fit, okay? And it can serve you so well and just be you know, the perfect thing for you and, and your venue or production company or what have you, okay? Last, we have the professional grade lighting console. The professional grade lighting console or software, and I mean they're they're kind of all the same thing, 
right? Like the consoles, they're just PCs. I mean, literally most of them, a lot of them run Windows and, you know, and they run the software or they're a PC with some sort of hardware to get the DMX out and maybe have some faders. Um, and that's what you want to think about. You say, okay, a professional grade console has the least limitations out of any of these. You can often do some really cool stuff like, you know, pixel mapping, and you have the ability to get control down to the finest detail when you're working with these different types of lights. And I think that's a really big uh, part of it, is that you go ahead and you go, okay, we can really get detailed, we can really get in there and do whatever we want inside of that professional grade lighting console with much less limitations than an intermediate or a basic level console. The downside, of course, of that professional grade console is there's more of a learning curve. Like we teach Onyx here a lot as a professional grade console. It's a great choice. And you can teach someone and get them building some basic stuff really quickly. The problem often becomes that there's so many options and so many things you can do that if you're not, if you don't have the time to commit to learning some of those things, you'll end up doing things in the programming that you're, you don't fully understand, and then it doesn't work the way you want, and then you're mad at the console. Um, ultimately, you know, that signals to me anytime we see that, that there's a mismatch, that it's like, okay, we need to get either someone in there that has the time to learn the upsides and downsides, learn how this happened, learn the particulars, or we gotta get something more simple in there, which could be a better fit. Okay, so that's the first part. Basic, intermediate, pro grade. You want to look at those three tiers, and that's what we're going to be focusing on the next few weeks, and really look at, okay, which one suits the kind of the level that we're at as a venue, as a church, as a production company, as a band, whatever type of lighting you do, okay? And once you do that, then it's time to move to kind of the second phase of choosing a lighting setup, which is where you say, okay, how am I going to run this? Like... We, that was kind of the programming, basic, intermediate, advanced, but then how am I going to run this, right? Do I have a bunch of faders that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be bringing these faders up and down during a show um, or an event? Is there going to be, is there even going to be a lighting operator? Because a lot of times in a lot of venues and, and places, the lighting operator might be somebody triggering it from stage. There might not be a lighting operator. Maybe you trigger it from your slides uh, and proclaim a pro presenter in a church, okay? If that's the case, then you may not need faders at all. Or maybe you want some, so occasionally on special events you can, but maybe you just need a programming section of a console, right? Maybe you just need a PC with some touch screens, okay? Um, so that's the next step is like, okay, how are we gonna play this thing back? And if you are triggering something from external sources, uh, via MIDI, from a VST plugin, something like that, you need to say to yourself, okay, is this particular software, this console, what have you that I'm looking at, is it gonna accept those triggers and be easy to work with them? Okay, because if you get into something that is gonna be really a pain in the butt to set up triggers for, and that's really key to what you're doing, then you're gonna be frustrated with that solution, okay? Um, if you're not ever triggering anything and you run it all live and on the fly, then you just want some faders and you're happy, you know? But you want to know that going into it because each console or software has its cans and it can't and its cans, right? It has things it can do and things it can't do, things it can do well and things it doesn't do very well. And you want to investigate how you're going to actually run things going forward and make sure that the solution you have is well suited to that. Um, and then last but not least, you, you kind of put this all together and you, you want to demo and test it out as best you can ahead of time. Uh, some great ways to do that are if they have a software you can download and start to try it out, do it. Though I think even better than downloading the software is actually watching tutorials and that's why we do so many of them here. Uh, if you're looking basic, intermediate, advanced level and our next three videos on the channel or in this playlist are going to be on those types of consoles, uh, look at each console, watch tutorials, because it'll really start to give you an idea of how the workflow is. It'll start to give you an idea of, oh, this console is meant to work this way. This is meant to work that way. And it's, it'll give you an idea if that's going to fit your needs or not, right? 
And then, of course, we also help people out with this inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs or for people who are buying stuff through Learn Stage Lighting Gear. So don't hesitate to reach out. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. And if you're brand new to this whole thing, you're brand new to lighting, which is something pretty common with a video like this, then go ahead, head over to LearnStageLighting.com. We've got a free guide we want to drop in your email inbox to show you how to begin with lighting, even if you've never done anything like it before. Check it out, and we'll see you guys in our next video, as long as you're subscribed. Thanks.